Shintoism, we believe that all the objects and the natural um, elements and creatures have spirits. So even inanimate, inanimate objects have spirits. And uh, we were told uh, in kindergarten that uh, objects that are thrown away in the trash before their time will go and cry in the middle of the night. And so as a child, when I was five, and I felt so, so sorry for these objects. I collect all materials uh, such as like the kitchen utensils, like spatulas and spoons, or um, this is from like a CD rack. Very cheap coat hangers that I buy from the thrift store, like maybe a dollar for 20 of them or something. These kinds of objects I collect from the thrift stores. Uh, maybe I go about once a month and uh, right now I know what kind of shapes and forms that I need. So I usually try to look for these curvilinear forms that are uh, very organic looking and um, nothing that's uh, very flat. In my basement, I have very many plastic bins that um, are all sorted. So all the blues are together, all the blacks are together. The second part of the process is making an armature. Now when you look at the penguin, uh, you can see the metal mesh that goes through like this. And that's the structure that's underlying, that supports all the plastic parts together. I do a lot of research, uh, either on the internet or um, in the books. Uh, I look at many, many photographs and um, study the silhouette of the animal. In larger works, like the horses, I use uh, steel wire or aluminum wire. The armature for the white horse took maybe three months. The final part is the part that I love the most. I try to align so that every piece that's very long are going in the same direction and that really enhances the, for, uh, the sense of motion in my sculpture. I try very carefully to um, place each item and then I step away, look at it, and then I come back and change things. Yes, I love doing that. I've always loved puzzles um, when I was a child. When two different things fit together very well, perfectly, um, it's such a joy. Before plastic, I was using uh, scrap steel and iron, but at the time I was feeling that um, my work was getting to the point where it's very repetitive and I needed to change something. As a part of my research, I went to many thrift stores uh, near the school that I was going, attending for graduate program. And uh, at one of the stores, I found uh, this plastic chain. This is plastic, but um, this is the kind of uh, material that in, in metal, I used a lot of for my metal animals. It's great for like the neck or the spine. And I think when I found this chain, this was the moment when I really thought, oh yes, I can use plastic instead of metal. So then, as I started collecting, I just started to see more and more possibilities. When I was working with uh, two friends on a public art project in Ohio, uh, we tried to get the community involved. And so, on, in the newspaper, we advertised saying, you know, please give us your plastic from your homes that you don't want anymore. And um, some people donated uh, these um, 
more like maybe like wine glass, margarita glass. Since we already had a few of these, I started uh, stacking them up in different ways and they started to look almost like, uh, like uh, a string of beads. Very pretty. And so I had this idea to make many, many strings of these kind of uh, plastic stemware and bowls and plates. And, uh, and then I got this opportunity to show um, a very long string of these objects. When I saw those inside of a uh, gallery window, then there were lights behind the plastic. And when the lights came from behind the plastic, they glowed almost like stained glass and they're so beautiful. So then, you know, it gave me an idea that, oh, I want lights inside of the plastic. And then something exciting happened. Well, um, I've been friends with Jim Mertz, who is a kinetic sculptor, for a while. I look all around me and I see sailboats sailing, I see a school of fish, I see um, a construction site with cranes and things like that, and jazz musicians playing, and to me, they're all doing a dance. They're all moving together and doing a dance, so I see that dance and I say, what makes that move, those invisible connections? And so I'm, I'm looking at those invisible connections between things and trying to express that in the sculpture. And uh, using math uh, like the Fibonacci series to, uh, it's in nature and it's math that describes nature and I try to find uh, math and algorithms that describe the motion and uh, let people see that. And then I had this idea, well, oh, I already have this exhibition scheduled, and what if the gym could make something move for me? Yes! Oh. Each string rotate independently, and then they change the speed, go faster, go slower, maybe uh, go in a different direction. And then the whole structure, the whole set of three, will also turn in different directions and at different speeds. The magic happens when I'm doing the computer programming. For this, I use uh, C and C++. 90% of the world is done in C++, so it's very good. And I've used it since, 1990, very old language. When I was uh, in elementary school, I used to want to be a painter. That's what I told uh, when a grown-up asked me, oh, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I want to be a painter. High school, college, and then we started to become maybe more realistic. Then, I, at the time, I think I was very interested in animals. So I thought, well, maybe I can be a veterinarian. Maybe I can uh, work uh, like in a circus, like animal trainer. Yeah. When I look at an animal, uh, I think more about the joy of being alive, the movement, the freedom. And um, it's more like the fundamental level of existence. If we start to think of these kind of plastic as valuable, then we will uh, treat these objects better and we will think and find ways to dispose of them better. Um, and uh, I think it all starts from us saying that, okay, this can be something valuable and good and beautiful. I want to convey the message about the environment in a fun and um, inspiring way because um, when I'm given a negative incentive, when I'm told that if you, if, I, if you don't do this, something terrible is going to happen, I'm going to be punished, then maybe I will go and still do something, but the very minimum of what's required of me. Uh, but if instead, if it's uh, 
turned into a game, for instance, that I can really enjoy, or you know, if, if there's a reason for me to want to do this instead of having to do it. I think also growing up in several different countries and having to adapt and uh, make new groups of friends, I've, uh, I've acquired a very strong um, yearning for a place to belong to. And that's something I want to give to these plastic objects, a place to belong to again and to have a second chance at becoming something alive and beautiful. So if, if we think of God, and if God is our creator, then to these objects, we are like God because we created these. And yet, we treat these objects, we use it you know, when it's convenient for us, and then we throw them away, when, and then don't even think about it. And so that's, that's really cruel. And I don't understand how we can ask our God to be kind to us when we are so cruel to these objects that we create.